Welcome back guys. Another day for the Firebird. Me and Ryan here, aka California Farmer, if you don't know. Um, we're continuing on the Firebird and this is actually, well I guess today, as in the, vi the day that you guys are watching the video, so which will be a few days from now, but the day you're watching this video is the anniversary of Ryan's dad, my father-in-law, passing away. So we were thinking, because I was going to do breaks for this video, just get them mounted, but we were thinking how cool would it be to mount the engine transmission on the one year mark because he would be really pumped about that. So that's what we're going to do. Um, it's kind of buried over here. But, and I'll kind of, we'll look at it well, obviously once we get her out, but... Um, for the those of you that are new or don't know, we have a um, LS3 crate engine uh, built by Blueprint Blueprint Engines, um, and then it's mounted to a 256 transmission. So that is like the bee's knees. Um, we're really excited, really excited. Bee's knees. The bee's knees. Or uh, school of uh, school of rock. Is it? Yeah. You know Leonard on the keyboard? Uh-huh. He's like, it's the bee's knees. <laughs> and he's like, bee's knees? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've actually been dying to open that fully. When we first got it, we just kind of cut it open to look at it. But uh, we haven't, like, really opened it up. So this is actually going to be, like, kind of the reveal, first reveal for things. So, yeah. We're going to pull that out real fast. And then we're going to have to get the engine hoist out, which that's already out. Um... But yeah, so mainly just got to clear this out of the way. Got a pallet jack right there handy. So yeah, let's move it over to the frame and we can kind of unbox her. All right, Ryan's going to do the honors here and fully open her up. Like I said, it is an LS3 engine. Um, Obviously a little modified. Tremec T56, six speed transmission. So yeah, this was bought as an entire package. This was engine dynode and everything before it left the shop. Um, I think if I remember right, it made 530 um, crank horsepower on the engine dyno. So, uh, Is that what that is? Yeah. Is it from that can? I guess we have diesel leaking out of our truck. So we gotta figure that out. Well, crisis averted. It's just a, a fuel tank that didn't have a cap on. So easy fix. Guess back to the, the fire burn. So I guess the nice thing about crate engines, or I guess an engine of this caliber is, it already has the harness and everything. Like really it's a lot of plug and play. Um, like my, um, my father-in-law Don, he didn't have the best health and so we wanted to get everything as plug and play as possible. That way, the amount of time that he could spend on it, he could actually get a lot done. If things are just plug and play, things will move along quickly. So that is why we actually ended up going with something like this, just because it's literally just, you plug it in. Um, this is already, it already has the fuse, fuse box here. Oh, okay. I was wondering about that too. So there's our uh, drive-by wire accelerator pedal, which I think it says around here. Right there, accelerator pedal. So yeah, this is gonna make things really easy when it comes to the engine side of things. Um, yeah, there's an ECU somewhere. It might be in that box. So like I said, it's already tuned and everything. Yep. So yeah, this box has the ECU. Boom. Plugs in to this, I assume. These look like ECU, cool. Let's 
Chevy Performance. Yep, so yeah, this will just make a lot of things easy and it's very cool. So I guess first thing first, we need to figure out how to lift it. Normally, um, normally you'll have the intake manifold off and you can put the valley pan lift on it, but I don't really want to do that. So yeah, we're gonna have to figure out a way to lift this without bending or breaking anything. And then we can get the engine mounts on it and set it down on the frame. All right, we got this thing farmer rigged up. Got some straps going underneath the oil pan come through here, making sure everything can't get bent or squeezed too tight. Then here we just have a strap wrapped around that a few times, double wrapped. And I think our game plan is to lift the whole thing up because right now it's kind of too far. We can't extend this out anymore. So we're gonna lift the whole thing up then kind of let it swing back and set it on the hoist and then unbolt the crate and lift the engine and transmission. So that, that's the plan. We'll see if that works. We'll see if that actually works. So yeah, I guess just start slowly lifting and I'll make sure nothing gets caught. So that went pretty smooth. Uh, Ryan right now is just unbolting the shipping mounts. All right, we have this thing hovering. Kind of, it's, it's not really sketchy. It's just, I don't know, you don't like seeing any engine <laughs> hovering in the air. So uh, yeah, we're gonna take off these shipping mounts. This what they use to ship it to or mount it to the crate. So unbolt those. Then we have these mounts I got from Speedway Motors and they should just bolt right on like so. And then we have the motor mounts there. So those are pretty straightforward. So let's get those swapped over and then we can See if we can set her down on the frame. All right, we got the engine mounts on. They were pretty straightforward once we figured them out. In theory, they should just sit right into the Roadster Shops engine mounts there. So uh, yeah, I guess the fun part of getting an engine hoist to roll with an engine on it, which never works. But yeah, I'll probably set you guys up and probably just watch us struggle.
This side of the person is the low. You want to watch those. Stop. Looks like we're gonna hit. I feel like got a lot of ways to go still. I'm oh, touching, you're, I'm yeah, yours, yeah, okay, yours is a lot higher. So go a hair more. I guess just keep going. in a little bit. Right there. Where's the other bolt? Uh, right on the control arm, right in front of your face. That side still needs its washer. Well, she is on, and man, what a beauty. And everything fits perfect. We're a little nervous there for a bit because the oil pan here is sitting kind of on the rag and pinion, but then we realized that we still have the back here mount it up just because we don't have a transmission mount yet so once you lower that the three or four inches that's going to get this off just fine so other than that the clearances are perfect which really this frame was made for this engine transmission setup um, those are kind of when you're selecting the options on the frame you tell them what engine and transmission you're planning on using and they build which really it's probably just the mounts that they adjust so they build the mounts the frame around what you are using so it's pretty cool obviously we still need to figure out what to do with that mount um i don't know if i need to buy something that bolts onto here and then the mount because i just don't know which i i can just buy a mount and see if it'll bolt, I don't know. I just don't know if that clearance, with how wide this is, if it's gonna sit low enough. So, I don't know. I obviously designed it for it, so maybe it'll work. I'll just have to get them out and see. But, but yeah, we're super excited. It's uh, it's cool seeing this finally come together. We've had we've had this engine for probably. A year and a half 
it's just seeing these together is just finally coming together so but i think uh i think that's where we might end this one we got her on there obviously still need to bolt the transmission on but she's sitting there i guess next step is uh brakes and all that brakes the third member and then we can figure out drive shaft stuff and then really besides the fuel tanks and all that which we need to I need to talk to Roadster Shop and see best way to do for train, for a fuel tank. I don't know. Obviously, we're probably just gonna buy theirs. Um, you just I don't know, the the do it yourself in me like it kills me inside because it's like two grand for their fuel tank, but at the same time, it's comes ready to bolt on and everything, and it'll look a lot better than what I can do. So we'll probably buy the tank. Um, I just wish it wasn't so expensive. But I guess everything here expensive, so I guess we'll just continue that theme. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll end this one. Next video, we're probably going to do brakes. They're sitting there waiting. Um, yeah, I just wanted to get this done for my father-in-law because I know he's here pretty pumped just as much as we are. So, all right. Thank you, guys. We'll catch you on the next one. Peace.